A Texas mom who was involved in a fatal shooting after a person broke into her government subsidized home is now facing eviction. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. The apartment called and told me that I was not supposed to have a gun at all, even though I kept calling them and telling them somebody was breaking in. They told me I could not have a gun and that I have 30 days to vacate. And how does that make you feel? I um, feel like I'm back at square one. I've been there for six years, so now I don't know what to do. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today. And for once, it's coming out of the state of Texas. I have brought up different issues throughout the state of Texas from time to time. And this is one of those issues I thought I just couldn't pass on okay so there is a story about a lady in texas and basically someone broken into her home right she lives in government subsidized housing and she shot that person now as everyone knows texas is one of those places it's a stand your ground state so when somebody breaks into your house you have to do whatever you can to protect them and you're covered by the law okay so you know in terms of the law she did absolutely nothing wrong. She had actually had her home broken into previously, you know, before this incident. And when the the previous break-in happened, she decided to go out and get a weapon for self-defense. So as far as I know, at least from the article, you know, the weapon was legal, you know, she rightfully owned it and the shooting was justified. But the problem is that the government subsidized housing that she lives in actually has rules against having a gun on the property. And because she was involved in a shooting on the property, guess what? Now they want to evict her. Now, I am a private landlord, okay? I don't, you know, I don't follow the government rules or regulations. Oh, this is a gun-free zone. I don't believe in that garbage, okay? I believe everyone should be able to defend themselves. And I allow all my tenants to have guns in there because they're legal. Okay, they are legal, and in some cases, you may need to defend yourself. So, I am 100% opposed to the requirements of this, you know, government, you know, I don't know if it's a nonprofit, I don't know if it is an actual government agency that owns this rental property, but I'm 100% opposed to them saying that the tenants cannot have the tools that are guaranteed to us by the Constitution to protect themselves, okay? Now, I'm always talking about how, you know, a, a lot of our contracts and our property rights are written out in the Constitution. Well, gun rights are written out in the Constitution as well, okay? And it blows my mind, especially in the state of Texas, that anyone would try to have some sort of rule that would infringe upon those rights, okay? So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button, maybe leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Do you agree with this landlord's policy or whatever it is, right, that says that the tenants cannot have weapons. Do you allow your tenants to have weapons in your property? I'm pretty sure that the grand majority of landlords do, you know, as long as they are legal. Now, you know, I'm not talking about stolen weapons. I'm not talking about people committing gang activities and, you know, crimes in your property. I'm talking about people who legally own firearms having their firearms in the property and then, you know, using them if necessary to defend themselves. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. And, you know, to me, it just, it boggles the mind that these sort of things are not allowed and that this lady is going to be evicted for this. You know, I'm not a fan of government bureaucracy. I'm not a fan of socialist type policies, but you know, th this is, you know, the end result of, oh, well, we had good intentions, but we we're going to infringe upon your rights. Okay, but anyway, let's get into the article and see what it says. They have a lot of specific details about the stuff that I'm not 100% uh, <laughs> sure about. Maybe, maybe I'm misreading it. You know, maybe there's there's more to the story that makes the the landlord's decision to evict this lady justified. I doubt it. Okay, but let's see. This article is coming from the New York Post.com, and it says Texas mom fatally shoots teen breaking into her home to protect family, now faces eviction. I had to think about my babies. All right, let, let's see what the story says. 
A Texas mother of four fatally shot a teenage home invader who tried to break into her daughter's bedroom window and now faces eviction as the case heads to a grand jury. Aaliyah Wallace, 25, said she was cleaning her living room when she heard someone, identified as 14-year-old Devin Baker, attempting to break into her rental home around 3 a.m. on December 14th, according to Fox 4. I went and I stood in the hallway and I could see him standing in the window. Lifting it up, I just shot, Wallace told the outlet. It was the second time Wallace's house was targeted by burglars in less than 24 hours. The teen allegedly tried to sneak through Wallace's eight-year-old daughter's window, according to the outlet. So I want you to imagine this, right? Now I have a daughter, I have a four-year-old daughter, okay? Now I want you to imagine you hear like a crash as somebody's trying to break through the window. You look up, it's it's nighttime, okay? It's dark out, you know, the person, I, they didn't say what they were wearing, but it's dark so we can assume that it's not easy to identify that, hey, this is just a, you know, a young teenage kid, right? Looks like a grown man. Doesn't matter if it's a grown man or not. You know that this person is breaking into your daughter's room, right? I would kill that person so quick. I would have done the exact same thing as this lady, okay? You are not going to touch my family, period, okay? This is an ab absolutely justified in every single way. It's unfortunate that there was some young thug who was such a horrible criminal that at 14 years old, he's breaking into people's houses, and guess what? He faced the ultimate you know, consequences because of that. That's unfortunate, but if it's his life or your daughter's life, guess which one I pick? I'm gonna pick my daughter, period. <laughs> There's no question. So he chose his own fate. And fortunately, it looks like the law is gonna be on her side. You know, yeah, the case is gonna go up to the grand jury, but I highly doubt, highly doubt that this is gonna be seen as anything other than a case of simple self-defense, okay? And so it's very unlikely there's going to be charges filed against her, okay? But, you know, she is going to suffer emotionally for, you know, taking someone's life, regardless of if the person was a scumbag, regardless of if the person, you know, um, threatened your family, right? You don't want to have to do that at any point in time. So this is, this is a very serious thing for her. And I hope that, you know, she can get, you know, some sort of counseling or someone to help her get through this very difficult time. Okay. And specifically, you know, I, I think that maybe the eviction notice, it might be a good thing. Now, I'm not saying that it's good that she's going to lose her place to live. Okay. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that I don't know if I could feel safe in this place with my kids. If you had been broken into twice within a 24 hour period, not only that, but you know, her picture is even in this article. Everyone in the area knows who shot that kid, right? It's, you know, I, I'm, it's not impossible to think that there could be some sort of retaliation against her for taking the life of this kid, right? And I'd be scared to death of that sort of thing. <laughs> so, you know, th this is a bad situation to be placed into, and I feel for this lady, okay? And, you know, it, there's only so much that she can do at this point in time, and I know she doesn't want to be evicted, but, you know, there, there's got to be, you know, like, you might have to just say, hey, I'm going to have to go stay with relatives until I am able to find somewhere else to live because, you know, I, I just don't, you know, this place isn't safe. It isn't safe. If you've been broken into twice within a 24 hour period and, you know, um, there, it, it seems like it's a very, very high crime area. It seems like it's a very unsafe place to have your children in in the first place. Baker, who also lived with his family at the apartment complex, died at the scene from multiple gunshot wounds. The concerned mother shared she had recently purchased a gun to protect her family after she had four attempted burglaries before the shooting. I have four daughters. It's just me and my four daughters that stay there. I just was protecting my daughters, Wallace said. The remorseful mother says she's devastated that he was 14, but I had to think about my babies. I didn't know he was 14 when he was on the other side of that window. All I knew was that somebody could come in and hurt me or my kids. That's it. <clears throat> Exactly. Okay, this is pretty simple. This is, you know, not 
a complicated case at all. You know, and some of the worst things you read is, hey, this kid lived in the apartment complex with her. So this is one of her neighbor's kids. And, you know, just coming, breaking in your place. This, this, this is a, you know, like a typical ghetto hood subsidized apartment building. Okay. The kind of place that, you know, crime is rampant. Problems are rampant in these places. This isn't the sort of place that anybody wants to stay in. So, you know, it, you know, like I, I feel because of the conditions and the, you know, the age of the, the kid that this happened to, that there is a possibility that there could be retaliation. So my opinion is get out of there, get the heck out of there. If, if you have anywhere to go, if you don't, you know, you might have to deal with it, but man, oh, what a, what a terrible situation. And then to think that now they want to move to evict her. And let me, let me get into the details of that because, um, it, it to me, it doesn't make any sense. It says, Fort Worth police have not filed any charges against Wallace. Wallace, who lives in subsidized housing, received earth-shattering news that she would be evicted from the property for owning a gun. The apartments called and told me I was not supposed to have a gun at all, even though I kept calling them and telling them somebody was breaking in. They told me I could not have a gun, and I have 30 days to vacate, uh, Wallace told Fox 4. I feel like I'm back at square one. I was there for six years, and now I don't know what to do. Fox 4 reported there were no laws that say residents in government subsidized housing could not have a gun and no signs were posted on the property stating so either. The post has reached out to the complex. Wallace fears the eviction could prevent her from finding other housing. It, it definitely could. OK, people see an eviction on your record. They're not even going to look at the circumstances behind it. OK, but, you know, the, the question is, OK, if there's no policy or nothing written, you know, maybe it was written on the lease. OK, there might be nothing public that says it, but it might be written on her individual lease or it might be, you know, go further than that. OK, it might be an unwritten rule. I don't know what it is. It might be, you know, just those signs. You know how they put those signs. This is a gun free zone or whatever around certain areas you know a bunch of garbage there should never be any sort of gun free zones in the United States in my opinion my opinion but <laughs> you know I don't know what what the reasoning is I don't know what the logic is I think that the uh, post tried to figure out what that was but nobody would talk to them and so now we're just kind of sitting here and we're speculating we're speculating trying to figure out why are they trying to evict this woman why are people infringing on people's you know second amendment rights and you know what exactly is going to happen in this case you know are you going to you know because this this could have negative effects on people this could have the effect of people feeling like, hey, I'm not going to get a gun and, uh, you know, to be able to defend myself. And then those people losing their lives to criminals because the criminals know that they are uh, defenseless, 100 percent defenseless sitting up in their houses. So interesting story. I'll put a link to the article in the description down below and in the comments, put what you think of this whole situation. OK.